Victory Road. Everybody has a story to tell. To tell. How you got to heaven when you came from hell. Victory Road. Where miracles unfold on Victory Road. Won't you come with me to Victory down Victory Road? Hi, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Victory Road, where you see the finest celebrities and real people telling their stories, how God brought them from a place of despair, sadness, sorrow, uh, incredible tragic stories to victory, and how they're now walking on their victory road. This is why this show was designed. And in Isaiah, um, it speaks about a highway to holiness. And this is where we want you to be, where you're walking into your destiny, into your victory. And today I have one of the greatest celebrities of all times. He's a dear friend. Um, he worked with me. He guest starred on my show many years ago when I was working on Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer. And actually, he was my love interest. And this man has such an incredible story to tell. He is uh, internationally known across the world, one of the most recognizable faces of all times and still doing fabulous work. And I would like you to now help me welcome our wonderful, incredible Hulk, Mr. Lou Ferrigno. Welcome, Lou. God bless you and thank you for doing the show you still with love us. Me? I love you more than ever. Thank you. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> this is a dream come true. I finally get my heart throb. Yes. How you been? I'm, I've been doing great. I've been doing great good, through good. the years. And you still, he looks as young as ever. I told him I want to use whatever pills, vitamins, minerals, whatever he's doing, because he just doesn't age. He just gets better through what time. What about passion? Being passionate, what you have yes. in your life. As long as you're passionate, that's what makes you healthy and rich. That's right. Yep. That's right. So I want to just jump into, you were born in Brooklyn, New York, correct? correct. And um, how many siblings did you have? Well, I have a younger brother, two years younger, and a sister, 10 years younger. Those are three of us. Three of you, okay. Uh -huh. And I would like to share real quick, because as you know, um, Lou competed and um, at the age of 21, became Mr. America, Mr. Universe, and then competed again, what, a year later, and won Mr. Universe again. So since then, he's the only person in the world, uh, in history, that has won this the title. I, the, I, the IABB, but the Universe, I was the youngest person to win the, the Mr. Universe back in uh, 1973, 74. Back to back, and then two years in a row. And then 1975, I competed with your favorite governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, really? <laughs> I know. <laughs> really? Okay, uh, I'm joking. Yeah. Anyway, it was a great competition <laughs> because it put us on the map. You know, pumping iron uh, invaded the mainstream, and basically everybody learned what bodybuilding was like. Because was before, bodybuilding was like a shallow sport. And so they approached him, from what I understand, right after you did this pumping iron? Yeah, I was training for the 1976 Miss Olympia, but then I received a phone call. They said, we have an audition for The Incredible Hulk. I said to myself, wow, I've been the Hulk my whole life. I used to be an avid reader of Hulk comics. And I said, why not? I went for the audition. This was like a month before I was going to compete. I was slated to win the Miss Olympia competition. The next day I was hired and I'm filming The Hulk. So I had to put my bodybuilding career on hold. And then wow. 1977, The Hulk was born. Before we go into your childhood story, because you're gonna inspire so many people when they hear what you went through and what you've overcome, I'd like to take a brief moment and show you a little trailer of your latest film it's called, called Instant Death. Instant Death. It's a British film. Take Wait a look more. and don't go away. We'll be right back. I promise to be better with Jane and Wendy. I swear to you, Cam, I swear. Dad. Hello, Jane. What are you? I'm glad to see you. Sorry I couldn't be here before, but that's gonna change. I promise. I didn't think God was real, but now I've seen you, I do.
Where is he? Who? Your father. Left this morning. He's not here. If he's not here, you'll have to do. Some nastiness today. It seems someone's attracting a lot of attention. That is bad for business. If you're wondering what just happened, I'm the father of the woman you put in the hospital. The granddad of the little girl you just had killed! So how do we handle this? Instant death. Wow. You see what I'm talking about? Remember this fabulous, incredible Hulk and him breaking out and turning into this green, tough, big dude, stronger than life. And uh, so the movie, Instant Death, what role is that? That, that What is your character on that it's one? It's a great part because uh, I play a soldier that... Uh, kind of like out of society as I began to my relationship with my daughter, granddaughter, because I had a British wife. It's a British film. Okay. So I decided to begin to my relationship. I fly to England, and this vicious drug gang get a hold of my daughter, my granddaughter. They blind my daughter, and they kill my granddaughter. So I suddenly seek revenge. And you see me, a part of me acting like never acted before. You see all the fight scene, the shooting, the emotion, the anxiety that the the despair about the whole thing. And it's one of those kind of movies like the Death Wish kind of film you know, you really root for the character because his name is uh, John and he's, he's unstoppable. That's you. Yeah, because the, I was approached by the company because they said, so used to seeing Stallone Schwarzenegger, why not give a regular a chance to show him as a hero in this film? So I'm very proud of this film, Instant Death, and uh, it'll be released by Sony Pictures, as a matter of fact, in April. In April, in April of this yeah. year. Uh -huh. So everyone has to go and support this movie, Instant Death, and root for Lou Ferrigno. And now, cut to a more serious subject. So as a child, um, Lou did not have a picture-perfect relationship with his father growing up, which a lot of you out there can share the same and identify with him. So now, tell us, what was your relationship and... and <clears throat> How dark did it go for you? Well, it was a love and hate relationship with my father. And I, when I was born, I was not the perfect son. <clears throat> I was rejected. So I carried his pain. At the age, I think you said at five years old, you had some type of hearing impairment or hearing loss yeah, due to, to an ear it infection? Was, it was close to birth. I think uh, about six to eight months, I had a severe ear infection. Oh, okay. So it caused nerve damage. I think it was giving me too much antibiotic. So I lost like 75 to 80% of my hearing. Oh my goodness. So back then, the age of five, they started to fit me with a hearing aid. So since five years old, I've been wearing a hearing aid, you know, my whole life. I've learned to uh, speak, lip read. So it was a, like an uphill fight. Right. Yeah. I, I had a tough childhood. You know, when you're rejected, you think, you see, children do not have the psychological defense to defend themselves. So right. in my situation, I was like bullied, ridiculed, made fun of, I'll call names like Deaf Louis, Deaf New. And I've learned as I've grown mm. to take the best when I can from my parent. <clears throat> because you know, you can't change your parent. So I was fortunately to discover bodybuilding and fitness to save my life because I had a lot of anger. If I hadn't discovered bodybuilding and fitness, I would have probably done bad things in my life, probably do drugs, probably maybe muck people. I mean, stupid things like that. Yes. But, but the, growing up as a kid, I had to wear this hearing aid, old-fashioned hearing aid, and kids would make fun of me because I felt like I was like an alien. And you know, my father, you know, basically dealing with that issue. So it was tough because he was the NYPD lieutenant. Your dad? So every day come home, yes, sir, never raise your voice. The old-fashioned Italian father, the Italian mother, very quiet, meek, not to, not to say a word or say anything to upset dad. So I grew up with that whole uh, scenario. So you had to walk on eggshells exactly. around him. Exactly. So he was pretty much egg shell. very That's every day eggshell. Wow. Yes. So he was very militant and well, had rage, anger issues. Yeah, he was an angry man. But what's interesting is that all the dreams he's had, I've done it. I've become. He always said to me, if you had your hearing, you'd be one of the most popular athletes in the world. 
So guess what? You became that. Much bigger than that. That's right. It's all about passion. Bigger and how better. How much you believe in yourself. Yeah. You know, you work on yourself. You see, every one of us has this child inside of us. And it, you, all you can do is be the best you can be because it's all about competing with yourself. That's Once it. you compete with other people, you lose. I've learned that at an early age, the maximize what I have. That's right. That makes you successful. That's good advice. Exactly. Well, so when he said he was not the perfect son, he didn't mean that he was a juvenile delinquent. Right. I just wanted to clarify, in his father's eyes, because of the hearing impairment or hearing loss, he was not the perfect, picture-perfect child, you know. And so he became, um, like, ashamed or... or um, yeah, the sh yeah, shame. Yeah, there was like a shame that he felt, if I can use that term. Um, Reject. But yeah, be, and, and so he was always putting down Lou instead of building him up. And this is a lesson for you parents out there. You have the ability to break or make your child. You have the ability to instill um, good values and encouragement mm -hmm. and words of inspiration and teach them to aspire to do great things. But... For those of you who did not have a picture-perfect childhood, like Lou, this is an example that you can make something of your life, and I'm going to let Lou tell you what he's doing. So you are now teaching others. You are inspiring your... You wrote a book. Two books. I wrote a book about fitness and bodybuilding. I wrote a book about called My Incredible Life as a Hulk. And I'm a worldwide motivational speaker. I talk to a lot of people about overcoming fear. Right. You see, all of us have fear inside of us. All we can do is reduce it. You know, I love to embrace fear. I love to change. I love to fix. Because growing up as a kid, nobody pat me on the back and say, hey, Lou, you know, you're going to be great. I had to give myself my own admiration, self-respect. So learning yes. from that, I talk to other people to give them hope. You see, everybody handicapped one way or another physically mentally spiritually emotionally. and emotionally yep. so it's all about taking what you have the best within yourself because if you don't work on yourself and help yourself no one's going to that's right it's up to you exactly a lot of people sit back and think in Poor their pity me. parties yeah the victim mode the victim. saying well nobody's giving me a break nobody's doing anything for me this is a lesson you got to get up off your tush and make something happen so you definitely started making things happen i you know and i've always said this and and it just came to me in my spirit that when you're so abused or beaten down uh, emotionally mentally physically that you either crumble you know, and you become a broken, shy, you know, little person the rest of your life, or you go, no, and you become a fighter, and you fight through it, and you become more determined. And so it sounds like that's exactly what you became. You fought for your life. I was a, I was a warrior, the yeah. fighter, because I realized yeah. that I never wanted to take a second seat to anyone. That's right. And, you know, anybody, anybody can do it, but, you know, some people who don't do it, they go into self-denial, and they have what you call, they talk fake confidence. Yeah. Talk, 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 talk. Yeah. It's all about taking action. And it's all up to the person themselves. You know, we, we could deal with molestation, we could deal with drugs, we can deal with uh, like suicide, parents, bullying, and bullying is huge. Oh, you know, I know. It, it I did be, another it, episode on bullying. It could be bullying. like a teacher, it could be like a family member, it yep. could be like a neighbor. Yep. So all of this can be overcome if you take action with yourself. I mean, there's no excuse. So how did you, how do you think that you got the, the strength to overcome this? Did, did you have one person that believed in you? Did you have anybody that said, Lou, you can have it all, that you can do? Or did it just all come from your fight within to survive? Part of it is the fight within. And when I discovered bodybuilding fitness, I've learned to connect the mind with the body. I went to the gym. As a matter of fact, I didn't have a gym back then. I had old ways. But it's all about that inner strength and the power inside of myself. I said to myself, if I could build this body and feel powerful, no one could stop me. So that started to give me the confidence because I was releasing all that anger. Yeah. And the, the better I looked, the better I felt about myself, the more respect I got from people and the more respect I got for myself. Mm, I just got the goosies on that. Woo. So that's it. What I want to do, just take a break a moment. We're going to switch to our fabulous Victory Road Band. Take a quick listen and don't go away because you're going to hear some more incredible, incredible news and other, you know, details on how this wonderful man is inspiring the world. 
Stick with us, we'll be right back. Holy Spirit come And Holy Spirit stay We need to feel your fire We need to see your gaze Now Holy Spirit come And Holy Spirit stay We need to feel your fire we need to feel your gaze. So won't you come, breathe over me. And won't you come, breathe over me. And won't you come, breathe over me. And won't you Come, breathe over me. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, stay. Need to feel your fire. We want to feel your heat. Thank you. That was our fabulous Victory Road Band that you just heard. That was Phil Jones, Cheryl Jones, and Anthony Salerno. And back to our fabulous story. We can now have our beautiful Carla Ferrigno, who just joined us. Welcome, Carla. Thank this you. This is Lou's beautiful <laughs> wife, his soulmate, oh. his personal manager, Mrs. Charles in Charge, right? She this keeps my, this it, guy's schedule together and sure. books him across the world. And so tell people now, you are an, uh, inspiring people across the world to, to do just that. Right, Carla? He's, Absolutely. You're booking him across the world. Yes. And, and you, now, how long have you been his personal manager? 38 years. 38 years. Yes. And you've been married for how long? 37 years. But we've been together 38 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, how can that be when you're only 35? Oh, come on. I saw that we were two. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> so now, when you're booking him and, and, and he's doing all of these lectures everywhere, um, it's just got to be... I also do all the contracts and everything to do with his film, TV, whatever it is. So she's sharp I'm, for I'm a his, I'm his business manager. Well, I'm very she's fortunate. She's very sharp for a blonde. I what love What better that. person do you have to yes, cut she your own is. I, But we blondes can say that. Nobody else can say I that, know. right? I so, know. So, Carla, so now, when did or how did you meet Mr. Ferrigno? Well, I was a therapist, and I decided to go to, to take a break from therapy and I didn't know what to do with myself, so I decided that I would go back to the restaurant business where I grew up in it. And um, I had many positions, and then I went to TGI Fridays because I loved that place. It was just We used open. to hang out there. It was fabulous. I remember partying at TJ Fridays. Yeah, it was fabulous in Marina Del Rey. And I went there. I trained as a manager there. Again, I get, always get new training. And uh, I ended up him coming in one night. I threw him out, and he came back. And then now you threw him yes, out I did. of TGI Fridays. Fridays, yes, on a Friday night when it was packed at the bar, and in those days, uh, there was no you. You weren't able to um, go into the bar unless you were under twenty-one or you were with your your parents. And he was there with like six men from Chicago, boys under under. And he was underage. He was fine. He was under, all the guys were all underage. The, okay, they were underage. Yeah. Yes. And so um, he <laughs> came to the door, and he, I, I was just busy doing my job, and I, I had just like broke up a fight at the bar, and then I was asked to come back out of my office to see this man that wanted to speak with me, and I came out, and there was this 300-pound man standing there, and uh, he was he just as gorgeous then? No, I didn't think he was gorgeous at all. Really? No. Wow, um, so he the, got better looking the older he uh, got, Well, right? he has, and he was gorgeous. And with the it special was just, touch of Miss Carla. It wasn't my idea. 
I, I liked small men that oh. were, yeah, I liked very small men and I didn't find him attractive, but and I really didn't like the way he was acting with me. So <laughs> he said, I better stay here and you know, he was just kind of tough. So then you, know? you became the ultimate challenge for him. Exactly. Right? That is what happened. Yes. And then he let, he, I escorted them all out. He went, he left, he came back a week later and, uh, he was real sweet. He, he was just so nice and he wanted to talk to me and I sat down, which I'd never done before. Being a manager in those days wasn't possible to even do that, but I did. Mm -hmm. And um, we started to talk and he kept saying, well, can I have your phone number? No. Can I take you out to breakfast? No. Can you, can I, oh, I know. I could, could I take you to a Dolly Parton party? Ah! <laughs> and, I, and I thought, you know, my boyfriend was a, was a psychiatrist, and he, I, I went into show business, and I don't not want to do this. And I said, no, uh, uh, I don't, no. And he wouldn't shut up because he's so he, wouldn't stop. he just he, he just relentless. going going. And I just to, just to shut him up, I said, okay, okay, give me your number, and maybe someday I'll call you. And that was the only way I could get That's away from so him. Cute. Yeah, so I did call. So him. he chased you long enough till he caught you. Uh, sort of. Yeah, he did. He did. But he took a lot of work. It was a lot of, I was a lot Tenacious, of right? Good he story, tenacious. huh? Tenacity. I love that. Yeah. So he has determination in everything. And I have so much more to talk to you about. We really want to talk about your products because now you have a family-owned business called... Several. Ferignofit. Ferignofit.com. Ferignofit.com. It's a great business website. It teaches you how to become your own personal trainer. For any, we get customized meals just for anybody, any type, like anywhere in the world. You learn how to train on your own. You don't hire a trainer, you train yourself. And now we incorporated, we're having protein supplement, vitamins and protein powder, fantastic. Uh, it tastes great and everything, so it's just getting bigger, larger and larger. And our daughter, Shauna, she runs the business because she's a big advocate of health and nutrition. The whole family, because all three of our kids are all personal trainers. So we're very blessed with that. For Rignofit.com, and you'll see it on the screen. Mm -hmm. So how can they find you uh, if they would need to, if people want to book you for seminars or public events it's or on so our forth? Website. It's on your yes. website, which Lou is, Rigno. which we'll have it on the screen. Louforigno.com. Louforigno.com. And to try their products, which are incredible, and to know more about what they do and how they stay fit and how to look this great, go to Ferignofit.com. Ferignofit.com, and you'll see it on the screen as well. And we have to bring this, unfortunately, to a close because I just feel like we're starting here, but we're going to have to do a part two and three with you guys and really dig more into your Did story. you tell her about the box? And, and there's also a box, a beautiful yeah, there's box. Yeah, a box. You get a new box Ferigno every box. month. It's a, it's a Ferigno Fit box. I just came back from Milan, Italy. And people there were, were begging me to get these boxes because they don't want to waste six weeks to go through a custom. It's a great box. Okay. When you, when you see the box, there's always a surprise. It has everything to do with, uh, for example, health, fitness. You get like different tools, what to do. It could be like a blender. It could be like a, a scale, different stuff. And much as myself, I love to receive boxes from So the they get a box every yeah. month. But don't, you fun love stuff. Have, yeah. don't you love what you have to have? It's like a gift. With a pack it's of Christmas every UPS, month. The UPS truck fills up. Yeah. You get excited about yeah. seeing these boxes. Yeah. I'm like Take the kid. I'm like, yeah, who sent me what? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. So that's really cool. So I encourage you to uh, contact them through the number of the web that you see on the screen. And uh, again, any bookings that you want to do for Mr. Lou Ferrigno, uh, you have to go through Miss Tuffy Carla and uh, and uh, he, let him inspire you and and uh, follow his lead. This man has has really gone through a lot as a child and overcome. He's an overcomer and he is now on his he's been on his victory road for years and still flying high on your victory road. I'm only halfway done. Hey, that's right. He's got many more years to do this victory road journey. But you know what my best achievement in my life is? What? Carla. The best. You know what? And I told her this when she told me her story and, and a little bit of your story on the phone. It came to me that this was uh, meant to be from God, God's perfect fit, that the two of them needed each other. And because she has quite a story to tell as well, and God led them to each other. It didn't just happen. God brought them together, and they um, needed each other and helped each other in the perfect fit. 
and uh, the Ferrigno perfect fit. And right? I always said it's it's divine intervention. I really believe it that. Was. It's it not was a coincidence. It is. What so is that speaking famous? of which, we've got to wrap it up. I'm sorry, did you want to add something? Yeah, what is that famous saying? They say you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your parents. Thank you. But, but the thing mm -hmm. is that what I'm trying to say is that all parents, you know, back in our time, they've done the best they could. They may have the issue. They didn't have a psychotherapist yep. they can go see, like psychiatrist. Yeah. But it's all about us taking the best from them, be the best we can be, and not repeat when they, and the negative side, what they've done. So that's what life is blessed okay. with. You know, who knows what our kids are going to go through when, when they have kids. Anyway, you know. But I know that life you've is, done a great job with your children. Yeah, but I life, just life know is that. beautiful. And it's just like I said, just be nice. Yes, you broke that pattern. You broke the mold. Mm -hmm. This is proof that children of abused families, regardless if it's physical or emotional, you don't have to pass it on because they always say, oh, abusers abuse. It doesn't have to. You can break the pattern. You can break the mold. And the Ferrignos have truly done yeah. this with their children. And so we're going to come back and interview them again if they'll be kind enough to have us back. But I've really enjoyed this time with our precious friends. And if we can join hands together, I always like to end every episode um, with a prayer that God gave me. This is going across the world. So this is for every nationality, every nation, every religion. Uh, I'm non-denominational. And God spoke to me a while back and said, you have to tell everyone that the kingdom of heaven is like an event on earth. Anytime you get invited to any special event, you have to RSVP or your name's not written in the guest book and there's no reserved seat and you just don't get in. He said, tell everybody that the kingdom of heaven is the same. He said, I want everybody to be here, but I want to write their name in my guest book. And so um, if, you're, if you're not really sure that you're in God's big book, doesn't matter again what religion, Say this prayer with me. It's the RSVP prayer to heaven. And uh, just say the simple prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father in Jesus' name, in Jesus name, name, I come to you a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive all those who have sinned against me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me so I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book and reserve me a seat as I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Oh, that was So, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, regardless, I'd love to hear from you in, in any way, shape, or form. You can see my info on the screen, how to stay in touch with us. And I pray that this this fabulous message today has inspired you because I know it really has inspired me. And we'd love to hear from you. We'd love any support you want to send. There's the information on the screen. And of course, my fashions have been supplied by MK Fashions, MK Designs, Marissa Kinson. Thank you. And until we see you again, I pray that you stay on your victory road. Bye-bye.